You are welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Commentary, a guide to a close fellowship with God. I am Salam Manager Haruna, your host. We are glad to have you. Hello, good day and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heavens is written by our Father and the Lord, Pastor E. A. Adeboye, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And this commentary intends to bring insights to God's Word by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Thursday, the 22nd day of June 2023. And our topic for today says, When God Steps In. Let us pray. Our everlasting Father, the Great and Mighty One, our God who is merciful yet fearful in His ways. We thank You for being our Father. We thank You for being our friend. Thank You for being our defender. Thank You for being the one we can always run to. The strong tower where we find safety. We are grateful, Lord, for this privilege and we say receive our thanks in Jesus' name. Today we have come, Lord, to be fed of You again. We ask that You would refresh our hearts and our minds, strengthen our spirits and open the eyes of our understanding. Teach us that which you have for us today and help us, Lord, to act according to them. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. You are welcome back. Our memory verse for today is from the book of Psalms chapter 62 verse 7. Psalms chapter 62 verse 7 reads, In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Psalm 62 verse 7. And our text for today is from the book of Exodus chapter 14, verse 9 down to verse 28. Exodus chapter 14 from verse 9 to 28 reads, But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them encamping by the sea, beside Pihahiroth, before Baal-Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there was no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone? that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to this, so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, 
the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians, and took off their chariot wheels, that they drave them heavily. So that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and the waters returned, and covered the chariots, and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. Exodus chapter 14 from verse 9 down to verse 28. God bless the reading of his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Once again, our topic for today says, When God Steps In. And in the body of our devotional for today, our Father and the Lord says to us that when God steps into the situation of a man, we call it a divine encounter. A divine encounter is actually a collision between God with his supernatural powers and human beings with their helplessness. In Luke chapter 7 verse 11 to 15, a widow on her way to bury her only son met Jesus, in whose presence is fullness of joy. Psalm 16 verse 11. The result was a collision that caused joy to swallow up sorrow. The widow's sorrow ended and she returned home rejoicing. The Almighty God is going to collide with you today and you will experience a great transformation in Jesus' name. During one of our programs some years ago, the Lord gave me a revelation for someone in the meeting and I announced, the Lord said there is someone here who should have been married but the mother says she would not get married. If the mother does not repent, she will be dead within a week. A lady that was of a marriageable age believed the word was for her and she went home to tell her mother. The next day, the mother, furious, came with her to see me, saying, My daughter came and informed me that you said I will die within a week. I told her exactly what God had said, explaining that I hadn't mentioned any name. After this, she asked the girl to leave the office, then turned to me. It is not that I don't want her to marry. It's just that she is the one taking care of me. Once she marries, there will be no one to take care of me. I replied, that is not a problem. I will talk to the husband and they will continue to take care of you. The mother then said, in that case, she can marry. Six months later, the daughter was married. In our Bible reading for today, we see how God stepped into the situation of the Israelites and brought doom upon the Egyptians. This tells us that we must be careful when dealing with children of God because Jesus can decide to step into the situation at any time. When he decides to step into a situation, you had better be sure that you are on his side. If you surrender to him willingly, then he will collide with all the forces against you. But if you are not on his side, a collision with him will bring about a negative result like it did for the Egyptians. God bless his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Once again, our topic for today is when God steps in. And in today's study, our Father and the Lord makes us understand that when God steps into a man's situation, we call it a divine intervention. We know for sure that God is almighty and there is absolutely no kind of situation that can overpower him. There is no situation at all that can have him wondering what to do. In today's study, our Father in the Lord describes man as being helpless, while he describes God as having supernatural powers. The truth remains that there are certain situations in life that a man would encounter and he would realize that of a truth, he is totally helpless without the help of the all-powerful God. There's a popular saying that one with God is the majority. That is because nothing can stand our God. No situation or circumstance 
no condition no matter how terrible it is considered to be. Also, our Father in the Lord always emphasizes the fact that there are various categories of obtaining victory. He has taught us before that when you fight by yourself, you may end up a casualty. When you invite God to fight along with you, then you may end up with a victory. But when you have God fight for you, then you would have the victory handed over to you. You would be more than a conqueror. In part of our text for today, Exodus chapter 14 verse 13 precisely, scripture there tells us, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew to you today. This is God's word to someone today, telling you, I know you are overwhelmed. I know you are burdened with fear. But fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The same scripture tells us, For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Now here's what verse 14 tells us. It says, The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Hallelujah! When the Lord is the one fighting for you, when he's the one who intervenes, when he steps in, you can be sure that that enemy is in trouble. When the Lord intervenes, when he rises to fight for you, the same enemies who come in one direction would flee in seven. When he steps in, the same challengers who were boastful, the same challengers who seemed unshakable, would suddenly be nowhere to be found. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15 and verse 17, we see another event similar to that of the children of Israel with Moses by the Red Sea. Here they were faced with three powerful kings who were coming to destroy them. But here was the word of the Lord to them. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 15, the Lord spake and said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Hallelujah! That is one point we must never forget. The Lord speaking in verse 17 continues to tell us that ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. We know the story very well and how it ended. The Lord stepped in and gave his people peace. If you read further, scripture tells us that the enemies who had come to attack God's children ended up helping to destroy themselves. Hallelujah! We still have the same God who did this in the past on the throne today. And as surely as he lives, if there be any enemies contending with us, let the Lord have his way and let them collide with our all-powerful God if they do not repent in Jesus' name. Now, in the closing part of our study for today, our Father and the Lord tells us that if you are not on the Lord's side, then that collision may be to your detriment. In other words, we are being called to have an inward look, to ensure that we are not in the opposition, because that would mean great casualty. Check yourself, and to thyself be true. Whose camp do you belong to? If you are in God's camp, then congratulations. But if you are not, then you need to find your way back. I'd like us to bow our heads at this point and we would be praying. We would say, Father, please step into my situation and collide with any force opposing me in Jesus' name. Pray that prayer and ask the Lord today. Say, Father, by your grace and by your mercy, Lord, step into my situation today. Ask the Lord to come in and take the wheels. Remember, we learn in today's study that when he steps into our situations, it is called a divine encounter. Say, Father, encounter us divinely today. Help our helplessness. We do not want to fight by ourselves. Say, Lord, have your way. Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. Be intentional and ask the Lord today. Say, Father, whatever forces that may be opposing me, forces that I may know or those I am even ignorant about, Lord, collide with them today and bring them to an end in the name of Jesus. Scripture tells us that the Egyptians you see today, you would see them again no more forever. Say, Lord, bring to an end the existence of every force opposing us today in the name of Jesus. Let those Egyptians that we see in the form of challenging situations, in the form of opposing forces, in the form of unfriendly friends, 
Let them be dealt with, O Lord, in your own way if they do not repent. We would also be asking the Lord today, we would say, Father, whatever we may do that would make us to be in the opposition, whatever we would do that would make you to collide with us, Father, help us to refrain ourselves from doing so in the name of Jesus. Grant us the grace, grant us the strength, grant us the ability to always remain on your side. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Our dear Father, we thank you for today's word. Our hearts are overflowing with gratitude because you have stepped in for us and made us more than conquerors. We ask, O oh Lord, that this would be our reality and our experience today and always. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have in our Bible in one year reading plan for today to read from the book of Psalms chapter number 95 down to chapter 103. We also want to thank you and appreciate you for joining us today. We sincerely appreciate you. We are glad you joined us. God bless you. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this sent to you daily, please do well to send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234-80-986-11226. Do well also to like, share, comment and subscribe to our various platforms available. Our hymn for today is the hymn 9 of our Open Heavens devotional. We would be singing immortal, invincible, God only wise. Have a lovely day ahead. See you tomorrow again by God's grace. God bless you and bye for now. enjoy today's devotional we'd love to hear from you kindly leave a comment you can connect with us on any of our social media handles attached god bless you have a great day and see you tomorrow